Checking a patient's vital signs is one of the most routine tasks performed in a hospital. Normally, this is a pretty simple task. We'll use a machine to measure the values. However, sometimes, for some patients, the machine's results just aren't as reliable as we'd like. When this is the case, and when we question the validity of the results, it is often best to go back to the basics and do things manually. In this video, we will explain, discuss, and demonstrate how to perform a manual blood pressure. There will also be some practice examples to allow you to test your understanding of how to read the pressure gauge. Before we get into the how-to, let's discuss the what. What are you reading when you measure a blood pressure? On first glance, the results present in what looks like a fraction, 120 over 80. But it's not really a fraction. It's two different measurements of pressure in the body as they relate to the force of blood pushing against the walls of our arteries. This takes place during two separate phases of a heartbeat, ventricular systole and ventricular diastole and that gives us the top and bottom numbers, respectively. The first thing you need to understand is the difference between systole and diastole. Systole is a phase of the heartbeat where the chambers are contracting, shrinking, or squeezing. Systolic pressure is the top number, the 120 in our example. It's the pressure, measured in millimeters of mercury, but people rarely say that part out loud, exerted on the arteries when the ventricles of the heart are contracting and forcing the blood to move through the body. During systole, the circulatory system is under a high amount of pressure, so the top number, the systolic pressure, will always be the larger number of the two. Diastolic pressure is the lower number, the 80 in our example. It is the phase of the heartbeat where the chambers are relaxed and resting. It's the pressure exerted on the arteries when the ventricles are at rest or in their diastolic phase. This is the resting arterial pressure and ultimately the lowest pressure ever gets in the circulatory system. So the bottom number, the diastolic pressure, will always be the smaller number of the two. When you hear a heartbeat or feel a pulse, you're feeling and hearing things caused by ventricular systole. When you're waiting for that next beat or pulse, you're waiting through ventricular diastole. In order to measure the systolic and diastolic pressures manually, you will need two things, a stethoscope and a sphygmomanometer, which is a word no one says out loud. We call it a blood pressure cuff. You don't need any specific or special stethoscope, but you will need to choose the correct size cuff for your patient. There are tables that show you arm circumference related to cuff size, but that won't help most people at the bedside. But each cuff does have a size range indicator. You'll wrap the cuff around the patient's bicep and velcro the two sides together. If the end of the cuff, sometimes labeled as the index line, fits in between the size range when applied to the patient, the cuff is the correct size. If the index line is not within the range, the readings you will get will be inaccurate. If the index line attaches before the range starts, the cuff is too big. Performing a manual blood pressure using a cuff that is too big will result in artificially low blood pressure readings. If the index line attaches after the range markers, the cuff is too small. Small cuffs result in artificially high blood pressure readings. The cuff is attached to two pieces. The first one is a bulb, and the second is the gauge. In the standard cuff setup, the bulb has a valve in the form of a turnable knob. To close the valve, turn the knob clockwise until it stops. To open it, turn it counterclockwise a little at a time. The further you turn it, the more open it becomes. With the valve closed, you can inflate the cuff by squeezing the bulb. To release the air, turn the valve counterclockwise. The further you turn the knob, the more open the valve, and the faster all the air will leave the cuff. The gauge is usually a circular analog readout, like you may see in a tire pressure gauge. The numbers represent the arterial pressure measured in millimeters of mercury. To measure blood pressure with this device, you'll want to place the cuff over an appropriate artery. To help you in this, every cuff has an artery indicator line, or arrow. Blood pressure can be measured using almost any artery, but the one that is standard is the brachial artery, found in either of the upper extremities. More specifically, the brachial artery is on the interior aspect of the upper arm. So with the patient's arm extended, palm up, it's on the side of the arm closest to the body. Have the patient bend their elbow slightly. The brachial artery is just above the bend of the elbow, on the side of the bicep muscle. Feel for the pulse with two fingers lightly pressed on the patient's skin. Move your fingers in this area until you feel the rhythmic thumping of the pulse. If you want, and if the patient agrees, you can mark the site with a body marking pen. This can be helpful because you're going to need to line that artery indicator up with this location. Apply the cuff by first lining up the indicator with the artery, and then snugly wrapping the cuff around the arm and attaching the Velcro. Keep in mind, it should be snug. If it slides around easily or slips down the arm, it's not tight enough and will give inaccurate, low readings. Blood pressures can be taken with the patient in a sitting or supine position. Have the patient relax their arm at about the level of the heart. Resting on the bed, armrest, or bedside table can work. 
Now set yourself up to use the stethoscope. Place the diaphragm over the brachial artery site. You won't hear a pulse yet, and that's normal. We'll start hearing things as we inflate and deflate the cuff. Ensure the valve is completely closed by turning the knob all the way clockwise. Now squeeze the bulb repeatedly to begin to inflate the cuff. We want to inflate to a pressure about 10 to 20 above their systolic reading. So if you already know what the patient's pressure is trending, let's say the last measurement was 130 systolic. Watch the gauge and pump the cuff to a pressure of 140, then stop. Listen. If you can hear the pulse, you'll need to inflate further. Go up another 10 and listen again. Once you don't hear the pulse any longer, you can begin to slowly deflate the cuff. If you don't know what the patient's normal pressure is, pump up to 130 to start. If you don't hear anything, stop. If you still hear the pulse, continue adding pressure until you stop hearing the pulse. Twist the knob very slowly counterclockwise. The needle will begin to lower as air is released from the cuff. The goal is to drop about 2 millimeters of mercury with each heartbeat. And that requires a very slow release of air. Watch the gauge as you listen through your stethoscope. You'll soon hear a whooshing and thumping sound. Take note of the number the needle points to the first time you hear that thumping. That number will be your systolic pressure, or the top number of your blood pressure. Then continue to slowly release the air, dropping about 2 millimeters per beat, and keep listening to that thumping. It will start to fade as the gauge pressure continues to drop, until you eventually stop hearing the thumping at all. The number the needle is pointing to when you hear the last thump is your diastolic pressure, or the bottom number of your measurement. Now you can open the valve further to completely deflate the cuff and remove it from the patient. Quickly jot down the numbers, or verbalize them, before you forget. If we look at our example here, the top number, or systolic pressure for this patient, is 112. That was the pressure when we first heard the pulse. The bottom number, or diastolic pressure, was 76. That was the pressure when we heard the last thump of a pulse. These sounds I keep referring to as thumping are not the same as the heart sounds you hear when you listen to the heart with your stethoscope. These are called Karotkoff sounds, and you're basically hearing the turbulence and the flow of blood through the brachial artery as the ventricles push more blood with each contraction. When you pump the cuff up initially, you're aiming to completely occlude the blood flow through the artery by providing more pressure in the cuff than the blood puts on the arteries during systole. By lining up the artery marker on the cuff correctly, you ensure the cuff inflates over the artery and allows us to pinch it shut when we provide enough pressure. When the vessel is occluded, you can't hear the pulse. As you release air, the cuff deflates and eventually the pressure from the cuff is lower than the systolic pressure and some blood can start to flow through that now only partially occluded artery. The flow isn't as smooth as it is in a perfectly open artery, so we hear that turbulence as a thumping in the stethoscope. We continue to hear this turbulence until the artery is completely open again. So when the pressure from the cuff is lower than the diastolic or resting pressure of the arteries, blood flows smoothly without any further turbulence. So we stop being able to hear that turbulent thumping and we have our diastolic measurement. What is a good blood pressure? According to the National Institute of Health, normal blood pressure for most adults is defined as less than 120 systolic over less than 80 diastolic. But not everyone is perfect. Hypotension, or low blood pressure, is defined as systolic of less than 90 or diastolic of less than 60. If you have hypotension, you may feel dizzy, lightheaded, weak, etc., because your blood doesn't have enough pressure to supply your body with the blood, nutrients, and oxygen it needs to function properly. On the other end of measurements, you have elevated blood pressure, ranging from systolic 120 to 129, and high blood pressure, or hypertension, which is defined as 130 or higher systolic and above 80 diastolic. When you have regularly high blood pressure, that consistent increased pressure causes arteries to lose their elasticity and weaken. Ultimately, this will reduce the flow of blood to the body, leading to a range of problems from heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, etc. Now that we have a full understanding of what we're measuring, let's recap the steps. 1. Locate the brachial artery. 2. Line up the artery marker on the cuff with the artery and wrap the cuff around the arm snugly. 3. Place your stethoscope over the artery and inflate the cuff until you cannot hear the pulse. 4. Slowly deflate the cuff 2 millimeters per heartbeat. Note the number when you hear the first thump as your systolic pressure. 5. Continue to slowly deflate and note the number when you hear the last thump as your diastolic pressure. 6.
completely deflate the cuff and remove it from the patient. Now let's try some practice. Watch the pressure gauge and listen to the pulse in the following clips. Note the systolic and diastolic pressure for each measurement. After a few seconds, the correct measurements will be revealed. Let's see how well you can do. So how'd you do? You should have gotten 116 systolic over 70 diastolic. For practice number two, you should have gotten 128 over 84. For practice number three, you should have gotten 114 over 74.